Sorry, how are you? <laughs> Hi, great. I, I finished recording uh, like a few, like I don't know, like thirty <laughs> minutes ago. So I'm I'm excited though. It's uh, it's been going well. I've uh, I've been doing things with uh, AB Road in England. So it's an early start. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hey, hey. Nambi, please, can you make a short presentation about your background before talking about your work on Star Trek Strange New World? Yeah, sure. Um, so musical background. Uh, I grew up uh, in Israel uh, and I uh, played um, the flute, guitar and piano. <laughs> uh, and I was in a school band and uh, I, I really liked um, like the orchestra setting, but I also really loved movies. And I was very um, in, into soundtracks. So uh, I really liked The Lord of the Rings and uh, Star Wars and uh, John Williams stuff a lot. Um, Home Alone. Um, there are some great scores out there. Um, and I would used to play them on piano and kind of um, kind of try to see how how, you know, how what it's made of, what is a score. And then I figured out that it's you know, <laughs> it's harmony and melody. And ultimately when you strive up all the orchestration and all the cool stuff, it's it's you know it's doable and um and so i started writing some stuff that this was I, I was like 13 or 14 years old um and uh then i decided that i should you know kind of go for it and become a composer and it's been a pretty big ride since <laughs> um so i worked on a lot of like short films and documentaries and feature films and then i got this amazon show um, called Absentia, and that was a thriller show. Um, and from there, kind of, it opened the door to a lot of other big things like American Pickle and uh, Woman in the House across the street from The Girl in the Window, that's Netflix. And then uh, Star Trek, all the Star Trek stuff um, that I've been working on um, since 2019. So it's basically um, been <laughs> a, a short while, but, but it feels long. <laughs> I am a Star Trek fan since a long time. There is 12 series based on the universe and 14 movies. Before preparing this wow. interview, I have the look to the, the luck, yes, to watch the five first episode and really appreciate your work. Are you a tricky? And what yeah. do you like as much on this universe? What, sorry, what was the other, the second question? Uh, what do you like so much on this universe? Oh, what do I like? Oh my God, I love everything. Uh, yes, I consider myself a Trekkie. In fact, here's what I'm wearing. Uh, like, and uh, here's what I'm wearing when it gets uh, a little cold in the studio. <laughs> nice, great. <laughs> yeah, so, and this is what I'm drinking from. So yeah, I, I would definitely consider myself a Trekkie. Um, I watch everything that comes out uh, from Trek. Uh, so very excited. And I, I, that actually really helped in terms of knowing the franchise so good. So you know, you know the history of the, the musical history of those shows and you can kind of honor the previous composers and honor you know certain themes or ideas and and, and you know the feel of track music and, and and you know having watched the original series and Voyager um I'm saying these shows in particular because they both really influenced my work on you know on my current Star Trek shows which are Prodigy so with Captain Janeway we have we have the Voyager influence and then with the or the original series is definitely influencing what I'm doing for Strange New Worlds because you know, the, 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 in Strange New Worlds, we are trying to recreate kind of, you know, we're going back to the 60s in a very modern way, but we're still trying to preserve the idea. I mean, as you've probably seen, the, you know, the, the same essence. And so they did it with production design and, and costume design and, and acting, and then also with music. That's what I'm going for, like a score that is more active and more dynamic and, and has a lot of melody and a lot of like very orchestral, less sense based and less percuss percussion based like it's very it's, it's a, a, a pretty good callback to, to how it used to be but in a modern approach um and what I love about the franchise is everything that it represents like the promise like um and the fact that you know ultimately you know the future of Star Trek is what I hope where humanity will get eventually because it's, it's 
you know, it's a it's a place where everyone is equal and everyone is welcome. And, and it's so, I mean, even from the 60s, they already had this kind of diversity where, you know, it doesn't matter what color you are or if you're a man or a woman or, or something else. Like you could, you could, you could be part of something greater. And um, yeah, there's there's like a lot of values that are being discussed. Um, and, and the way that we look, you know, Star Trek examines other societies and other cultures, you know, alien societies, but eventually that actually reflects on us as, as a human society on Earth here. And I love that. And I, I remember watching uh, the, the, you know, TNG or, or actually all the Star Trek shows, they always bring some sort of a, an ethical dilemma or, or situation that is not super easy to solve or a puzzle or a mystery. And, and then, you know, it, it provokes a lot of thoughts after you watch. So uh, yeah, I love that stuff. Can we say that the fact that you have uh, such great knowledge of the Star Trek franchise helped you to create this curve? The, the the great sorry what <laughs> can we say that you have as you have a great knowledge of the universe of Star Trek yeah. this helped you to wait to create this amazing skull yeah yeah it was definitely very helpful to know uh, the the history of Star Trek and you know having having watched all these uh, these shows and the films I'm I'm certainly I'm taking you know I, I feel like like Alexander Courage and Jerry Goldsmith are in a way my mentors without you know we never met or anything but um, but they are mentoring me in 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 what I do for for the score for Strange New Worlds because these are like I, I'm I'm basically continuing their their timeline I'm I'm continuing what they started and it's it's a great honor. And it's a great responsibility <laughs> and I have to do an amazing job because, you know, when you look at all these great composers like James Horner, Michael Giacchino, like all, all these incredible people who contributed to our Star Trek universe music. So you want to maintain that line and, and do something that honors it, but the, the tradition, but also goes forward to Strange New World. <laughs> You are the first woman to score music from Star Trek Universe. How does you feel about that? How do I feel? Oh, yeah. well, I, I feel very honored. I feel excited. I feel it's a big responsibility to, to do it right. And, uh, you know, so that, that you know, other producers will see, hey, women can, can score just as good as men, maybe even better. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm very, very excited about it. I'm, I'm happy that there's now also diversity behind the screen and not just on the screen with Star Trek. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the first, but I'm definitely not the last. What is for you the main duty of a good composer? The main duty, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's to help tell the story, to, to propel the story, to uh, evoke the right emotion, um, and basically to to compensate to co complement the, the 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 picture or the the video or the what you know whether it's a film or an episode. But you kind of want the music to complete things without taking away too much attention or without um, being too too much you know too strong or too uh, too intense or like. You want to make sure that the dialogue is, I call it the dialogue is queen. So uh, the dialogue is the most important element. And when you have the three sound elements like dialogue, music and sound effects, you have to honor the, the work too. So you want to avoid, you know, fighting a certain sound effect or you kind of want to complement the all the other elements of the story. So whether the, the scene needs a little bit of pulse and action, or maybe it needs some emotional line, or maybe it needs a, like just hitting some comedy beats, you know? And with Star Trek, I get to do all of that because it's so diverse. And even with Strange New Worlds, the episode, you know, we have action and we have comedy and we have drama and we have romance and all sorts of things. So it's really exciting. Music is at the center of episode two, Memento Mori, and your music takes really an another dimension during this episode. Do you see music as an important way of communication and to give a better impact to a story? Yes, of course. I, I think, and yeah, and it totally shows in, in that story in particular because the story was so music heavy. And we actually, like, th that was a request uh, from the filmmakers to have this music 
even before they shot the, the episode, uh, it was, you know, we, we, I had to, this, is, this was actually the first thing that I created for, for Strange New Worlds. Um, so I'm very, very excited uh, that it worked out so well. And the actors, they learned the songs. And I, I got to create the, the, the alien songs, you know, the, where, where the alien is repeat, like the, so the comment is repeating the melody uh, that Uhura is singing. And then it sounded really, really, probably the strangest thing I wrote at that time. <laughs> and then uh, and when, when the comment at the end sings it, its own song and then Uhura repeats it, that, that was all really cool for me to do. And yeah, I feel, that episode in particular really used the music as a device. Um, so that was like the music on its own. And the idea of music as a universal language is really great. Like, I mean, <laughs> sign me up for that. That's that's really amazing. Um, so yeah, music has a lot of power, especially in, in this, but also in other episodes. What can you tell us about your collaboration on this series with the director Akiva Goldsman, Maya Virulo, Leslie Hop, Dan Liu? Um, yeah, so Akiva Goldsman is our showrunner, but he normally, I mean, we have two showrunners, let me clarify. There's Henry, uh, Henry Alonso Myers mm -hmm. and Akiva. And now Akiva is handling a lot of other stuff, um, not, much, not so much music. We only had maybe a couple of calls at the very beginning where he kind of had some ideas and, uh, you know, he, he threw it in, into the room. Um, and I thought these were good ideas. This was actually about the Vulcan theme, so for Spock and to Pring. Uh, and we had the discussion whether it should be, how emotional are, are we going with Spock on, on his journey that he's half human and half Vulcan? Because this is a theme that is explored throughout, um, throughout the whole season. And so I wanted to establish that because, because of, you know, I'm a Trekkie, so I know Vulcans, they, we don't really have a lot of, emo like, you know, to suppress their emotions. Like it's, it's, but with Spock, he has this, you know, he has this clash, um, and and so ultimately, our decision was that as the you know as music is going to represent what the viewers are are you know are basically thinking about this moment, um, and what Spock is really experiencing inside, then yes, this was to go for the emotion. So that was with the Kiva, and then Henry is dealing with most of our other music you know discussions. Um, the director uh, Maya, I think that's her name. Was it my uh, Yeah. Yeah, so we only had one, like, you know, we only had the discussions at the very beginning where we, I was doing the, the song stuff and, and the things that Uhura and Spock needed, um, you know, and, and they wanted also, that Maya wanted to have the, the alien music on the stage so the actors will feel that it's real and so they can react uh, to what they hear. So we did this very early on. Where is for you the best place to record in Los Angeles the score of this series? Sorry, what, can you repeat that? Which was for you the best place to record the score of this series? The best place to work yes. on it? To record. To record the sound. Oh, to record, yes. Yeah. Um, so we are using uh, the sound, uh, the scoring stage at Warner Brothers Studios, mm -hmm. which happens to be five minutes from my house. So it's very convenient <laughs> um, and uh, it's, it's been fantastic. We're working with uh, 37 musicians on our ensemble. We have brass players, we have strings and woodwinds. Um, the rest of the elements are currently, uh, you know, either synths or percussions uh, are in the box. Actually, we also have harps sometimes um, on the bigger episode, like um, when we could afford it. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it's, it's been great. I have an amazing team that helps to put everything together. So I feel kind of like a captain, um, you know, I'm leading this effort, but you know, my orchestrator is always there and, and he's, he's like, you know, like houndsman, <laughs> he's, you know, you know, and, and uh, Tracy was also an orchestrator that helps uh, sometimes. Um, and then I have uh, uh, Matt, who is the music editor. It's like number one, you know, with, with all the, I really need those, that crew, because otherwise there would be no score. <laughs> you have won the BME Award for your score for the Oscar winning documentary short Colette, as yeah. well as the Hollywood Music and Media Awards for your work on Passage. 
and best short score on Firmusite. Did you yeah. express such a recognition for your work? Uh, a recollection? A rec recognition. Oh, recognition. Yeah, it's, it's really great to receive recognition for sure. Um, I don't do it for the recognition. I do it because I love, I love doing that. And I love telling all these stories. Like the story of Colette was like absolutely incredible and very personal um, because she went back to visit like the, the camp where her brother died by the Nazis and my family, like my, my grandpa survived those Nazi camps. So this, you know, things are very personal. Um, I've always tried to connect with the film or, or the project that I work on. I think that would yield the best result. Um, but yeah, of course, it's great to be recognized for, for the things that you do. What was for you the best memory on working on a score? On, on which episode? Which, which was for you the best memory of working on a score? On oh, a score, working on a score, best memory. Um, I think it was an American Pickle. Um, and that was when we finished uh, recording the last day and I, I got very emotional because that was my first, you know, time I recorded a big orchestra, it was in Fox Studios, and that felt like, like something that, you know, you never forget your first, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how I, uh, how I felt about that. Um, and it was just, a, just incredible, like I, I would give a lot to go back to that moment, it was just, um, just ph phenomenal. Any advice to young composer, especially one who works to compose for series? Um, well, my advice would be don't take advice from other people because I feel I feel that um, everyone has their personal circumstances. And so what's right for me is not necessarily right for you. But that being said, um, you know, uh, my, my teachers at USC, they had a very good catchphrase, which I think is really helpful. So, and that is um, that this was Don Carolyn, he, he is the head of the department, and he said, work hard, um, be nice, and get lucky. And I think that's very correct, because there's three things you have to be, you know, ethical and, and work really hard, be resilient, do, do everything that you need to do, all your duty. And then um, be nice, like always, always make people want to work with you and smile at them and do what they're asking you to do <laughs> and serve the project well. And, you know, make, make sure they want to hang out with you at parties because you're fun. Um, and then get lucky. That's the one element that it's hard to get. Like, you know, you just have to be at the right place. Uh, so what I did in order to get lucky was to work on everything that I could, because one day I did get lucky because an editor that I worked with um, on a short film remembered me when he started working on a big show for Amazon, and he, he recommended me to get that, that gig, and that's why, you know, I got lucky, but did I get lucky or did I create that luck? I think I, I kind of helped so that would be you know general thoughts but everything take with a grain of salt because everyone has their own life and it's very personal and my last question can you talk a little about your upcoming projects yes um i'm still working on star trek yeah. uh, so we're doing uh, I'm, I'm actually recording for prodigy star trek prodigy the animation for nickelodeon um, and then uh, I am working on Strange New Worlds, and in two weeks we're starting uh, the next season, so that's very exciting. Nice. And I read the, the screenplays, and every, I'm just so thrilled to see where those stories are going and the character development. Um, and then I'm working on an action movie, which I cannot talk about yet, so, but I'm very, very excited about it. It's, it's, it's sounding really cool, and um, yeah, I love action, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have a great day.